UKIP have the objective of getting Britain out of the EU. There are good reasons for that. But our objective in the Parliament is to expose it. We're there actually to come back and describe what's happening and tell you why we shouldn't be there. In the meantime, UKIP vote against all of the directives coming out of Europe for the sim simple reason that one size doesn't fit all and that all of our regulations, all of our laws should be made in Westminster suitable for the United Kingdom. I can give you many examples of the things that they're trying to impose on us and I'll try and give you a few uh, today. But I'd like you to come and visit the Parliament because then you'll have a half idea of what actually goes on, the voting procedures and how poor they are. The way that uh, we, uh, we, try to, we try to get th through sometimes 900 votes in about an hour. Some of them block votes where you're voting for 50 at a time maybe but they force them through at such speed, nobody really knows what they're voting for. Often the MEPs are only given notice at the beginning of the day that these items are actually on the agenda. They're unaware before they reach the Parliament, and they, the, the, the final draft doesn't arrive until maybe 10 o'clock in the morning, and the votes are at about, well, between 11 and 12, we would start voting. So in between that time, the groups, and UKIP is part of a group of other nations in the parliament, all of them wanting some form of either independence or, or, or more power back to their countries, we are talking about how, how we will vote. And the assistants in the parliament sort of describe what's going on. I mean, I can remember one occasion when we were voting on speed limits in forests, the harmonization of tractor parts, windscreen wipers on tractors, tractor this, tractor that, tractor the other, and I was thinking, are we trying to design a Soviet tractor? And everything has to have a regulation. So if you want to make something now in the EU, you're sort of hogtied. You're bound by having to have regard to these weird and wonderful EU regulations made up by people on committees who've never seen a tractor possibly in their lives. And certainly, I've seen them trying to redesign airports, and they know nothing about airports on the Transport Committee. And yet there they are, making rules and regulations to try and virtually close down our industry. And when I say close down our industry, the EU seemed to do that with great success. If you remember what happened at Wrighton to the Peugeot plant, the DTI, were trying to keep the DTI, the Department of Trade and Industry, which is the British government, were trying to give Wrighton grant aid to stay in Coventry. Peugeot factory. And the, the EU gave them the red card saying, no, you can't do that. You can't do that because actually it's going to distort the competition. You're giving favoritism to one firm in the EU and we've got to look after other people like Volkswagen and Mercedes and Renault and all the others. If we do it for one, we have to do it for the rest. The same sort of argument they gave on Rover you know, because they wouldn't support them really at all until they folded and then they'll support anybody. But what happened was the EU gave grant aid to Slovakia. They delayed it for three years. They stopped the D DTI um, giving any grant aid over three years. And then they, they, when Slovakia came into the EU, they actually prepared the ground in Slovakia with EU money and gave them grant aid to move that factory to Slovakia. Well... The, the Germans and the British are the main contributors to the EU. The rest of them are mainly on the take. So you can actually say with some truth, and probably all positive truth, that we actually paid, we actually paid through UK taxpayers' money to remove a plant out of Wrighton and put it in Slovakia. So we're paying to make ourselves redundant. Now, I worked for seven years in the Quinton Hazel Group. Uh, they make mot motor components, they also distribute, they also retail at the time I was there through standard motor centres and also it was the Park Co group doing wholesaling, all part of the group. So I was the group property manager, I saw how it worked. And in those days, and I'm talking about the 70s now, uh, the managing director would sit in his office with a map on the wall with a red dot in the middle around Redditch or around around Birmingham where the manufacturing was taking place and everything would be distributed to warehouses on the edge so there'd be one in Inverness and one in Plymouth and so on wherever you're going to. So the centre was around the Midlands because that is the centre of the UK as they saw it. 
Now, if you look in a, in a modern day uh, MD's office, that's not the center anymore. Because now we're in one country called the EU with 27 states. And the objective is to actually distribute across the EU. So the center is now roughly Germany, probably Poland, because there's a better re a labor rate there. So the new MDs are looking at distribution from Germany. So our, we're on a cul-de-sac here with a, a lineup for distribution into warehouses. So as time goes by, our industry closes, it migrates towards the center, which is more cost effective, because it's always better to distribute to the set, from the center to the edges. I mean, you'd be a fool if you set up in Inverness and thought you were going to export, say, to Italy. That's how it works. It's better to distribute from the center. So, no wonder our industry migrates. Those that aren't closed by the labor rate in places like China and India go into the center of Europe. HP Source moves from Birmingham and goes to Holland. Uh, the chocolate factories up in York decide that they're better off more centralized and Nestle's take them over. Today, we've got another steel mill closed, haven't we, up there in the north. Red car, is it? Up that way. And I don't need to tell you about this. It's happening. You've seen it happen, particularly in this area. I'm a chartered surveyor dealing with commercial and industrial property, and I set up Naturist Giles in 1980. And you've seen it as well. You've seen industry disappear. You've seen why as well. Some is because of the rate, labor rate overseas, but a lot of it is to do with the labor rate in Central Europe and the distribution pattern. So what I'm saying to you is, when we were told that this was a good deal for trade in the European uh, Union, the common market as it was in the 70s, they were lying, weren't they? Because we're a world trader, not a European trader. Our ports, our ports distribute to the world. And that was, that was how we made our living. We traded with people who made things differently to us, different products, whereas now we're trying to face a competition which does everything we do. Why? I, I don't really know why, because it never did make sense. But we were told that this was such a wonderful idea. We're also told, aren't we, that 50% of our products go into Europe. Well, that's not true. 80% of everything we do by GDP actually is in this country. It never leaves the shores. So everything we do, 80%, is to do with internal distribution, buying things here, making things here, and serving people here. It's the remaining 20% that's the export market. 10% of that is said to go to Europe, and another 10% to the rest of the world. And we've always had a very high export market to the USA in things like invisibles, banking, insurance, and all the things that are being hit just at the moment. And as time has gone by, the European Union have tried to claim more and more that we're actually exporting to Europe, not to the rest of the world. And it became quite evident, uh, because a, a Labour lady MEP said, we export more to Holland than we do the rest of the world. And I was thinking, what on earth is this woman talking about? That's rubbish. She was looking at the EU statistics, which say that our exports, which go through Rotterdam, are actually exports to Holland. Well, they're not. They're exports through Rotterdam in containers from pl places like Harwich and so on for onward transmission to the rest of the world. So they count them into Europe and don't count them out. So the statistics are bent towards proving that we're exporting to Europe when in fact we're not. We're exporting through Europe, through Rotterdam, to places like Australia, South Africa, and the rest of the world.